Hello, and welcome to this video. We're going to talk about gamepads motion control versus mouse control. I'm an advocate for gaming using gyroscope. They improve game controllers' reaction speed and aiming, but are they as good as using a mouse? Spoiler alert, they are not. To explain why, we have to dive into the inner workings of gyros, specifically the one in our game controllers. Then we can do a comparison with the mouse. So what is a gyroscope? Gyroscopes have been around for almost two centuries and they are best known for their use in game controllers. I'm kidding, they are best known for their use in aerospace. It gives a reference point to a flying object so that it can detect its orientation. For example, in deep space, where there is no gravity and everything is moving around, the only way to know that you have changed orientation is with the help of a gyroscope. The most popular type of gyroscope is that of a fast spinning wheel that resists rotation away from its axis, also known as precession. We have seen it in elementary science classes, if you missed school, don't worry, just picture a spinning top, it's the same thing. But that is not the gyro device that is in our game controllers, even though I'm sure it would be fun to have many spinning discs in our game controllers. They are just a tad bit clunky, especially the one used in aircraft. If we don't have spinning wheels, when what do we have? Well, there are many variations to the original gyroscope. One of the most commonly used nowadays is the ring laser gyroscope. It uses laser beams to measure the rate of rotation. It doesn't have any moving parts, making it much more durable and it is much smaller than the spinning disc. But it is still not small enough to fit inside our game controllers. The smallest is about the size of a Rubik cube, and you would need three of them. To achieve the size that makes it usable in handheld devices, we have to thank the silicon god for that, the MEMS gyroscope. Our electronic devices use MEMS gyroscope. MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical Systems. And a MEMS gyro can be smaller than the width of a human hair. Now, that is small. And that also makes them much cheaper. Amazingly, those tiny devices have moving parts, unlike the optical ring laser gyroscope. The MEMS gyroscopes are often combined with accelerometers and are known as six-axis gyroscopes or motion sensors. The MEMS gyro are manufactured the same way as a computer chip, through a process called photolithography. It's just a fancy word for a money printing machine. While the process of making them is almost sci-fi level, the principle of the accelerometer is rather simple. To detect motion in one direction, it measures the distance relative to a mass when moving. Put three of them, each on a different plane, and you have a three-axis accelerometer. But that's for tracking acceleration in a linear direction. How about rotation, like the original gyroscope? For that, you take a mass and oscillate it along one plane. And whenever there is a rotation perpendicular to its direction of vibration, the mass will resist the rotation, and you can measure the difference in angle. This is called the Coriolis force. It's a fancy word to say that oscillating objects don't like rotation. If you want to learn more about this, I recommend watching the video The Micromechanism in Your Phone by Breaking Taps. So with the oscillating masses on a different plane each, you have another three axes to the three axes of the accelerometers making up the six axis motion sensors that we have in our game controllers and phones and a lot and a lot and a lot of other devices. But hold up, for those that are still following, you might ask yourself, why do we need six axis? The spinning wheel gyroscope only did so on three axis. Besides, most games only make use of rotation, not motion in a different direction. Maybe with the exceptions of the Wii. The reason is MEMS gyroscopes measure the rate of rotation, but it doesn't measure the angle from the starting point. Unlike the spinning wheel gyroscope, in which you can measure the rotation angle from the spinning wheel, the oscillating mass in a MEMS gyroscope will eventually move along with the rest, losing its point of reference. This can also be referred to as a gyroscope drift, and all gyroscopes are prone to drift. Gyroscopes in general are meant to measure the rate of rotation, not to be a reference to a fixed orientation. Because of that, gyroscopes need to be calibrated to a point of reference, Conveniently, we have gravity on Earth, and because gravity is an acceleration in one direction, it is perfect for the accelerometers to measure. Thank you, gravity. So with the six-axis motion sensor, and with the magic of software, it can tell which way is up and which way it is being moved and rotated. And that was the quick overview of gyroscope and how they work. Phew! Before we continue, we just need to understand how that converts into our game input. To track the in-game camera movement, our devices use yaw to map into the horizontal movement, and pitch to map onto the vertical movement. In racing games, 
Our devices use the role to mimic a steering wheel. This is done through the magic of math and software. It takes the rotational accelerations and converts them into a distance travel in one direction. Who said math was not useful? Remember, there is no tracking to a fixed point. It is purely doing this by measuring acceleration. This is exactly the same way our joysticks or thumbsticks work. A bigger distance from the center equates to a faster motion in that direction. We can go deep into the subject, but now it is time to move on and understand why they have limitations in gaming and how it compares to a mouse. We learned that gyro tracks the rate of rotation, but do not have a reference to a fixed point or line in space. To do that, it uses the accelerometers and gravity to know which way is down. However, if you move your device around, which inevitably happens, it will lose track of where down is. That is why calibration is always done when the game controller is lying motionless on a flat surface. So its calculated reference point is very inaccurate. As an example, take this remote control that has a three axis gyro. It is meant to point at the screen and control the cursor, but you can basically point it in any direction and still move the cursor around. Unlike a mouse, which has its point of reference on the surface of the table, that surface is always there and it can track its position on that surface through its sensors. Also gaming in zero gravity like this space will be much harder. What? I'm sure space gaming is not too far away. The second limitation is that MEM gyroscopes use a vibrating mass to track the rate of rotation, but they can only track acceleration up to a certain value, which is the gyroscope measurement range. And that varies from one gyro to another. In general, don't expect MEMS gyros in game controllers to be able to measure a massive range. Its range is pretty lame. How is that a limitation, you may ask? Well, consider this. If you rotate a gyro within its limit, then all is fine. It will measure all movement accurately. If you do it faster than its measurement range, then any speed over is simply disregarded. A mouse is also prone to the same challenge to a certain point, especially for a mouse with a low polling rate. If the polling rate is too low, it might lose track and not capture the movement accurately. That is why gaming mouse usually comes with a high polling rate. Polling rate can also affect the reading from MEMS gyros, but its measurement range will be the limiting factor before the polling rate. For the last and third limitation, we saw that in the MEMS gyros, there is a vibrating mass that it uses to measure the difference in rotation. And with anything that has a mass, they also have inertia. What this means is that if you move your controller fast enough and stop suddenly, the mass will keep going in the other direction before it stops. And that causes unwanted readings and thus inaccuracy. This is fine for slow movements, but it can be quite bad for quick ones. A mouse is also a mass that has inertia when moved, but you are in direct control of that inertia, unlike the mass in a gyro. And those are the three main reasons why a gyro in a controller is not as precise or as fast at tracking movement than a mouse. In comparison, a good gaming mouse can track with perfect precision, capture fast motion, and the user is in control of the inertia. And for those that think that mapping gyro to a mouse will solve those limitations, I'm sorry to say that is not how it works. The reading from a gyro before it is mapped are prone to the same problems. And to the believers that mapping gyro to mouse is better than mapping gyro to joystick, consider this. Mapping to a mouse is taking the rotational measurements and doing math to convert it into cursor movement. Mapping gyro to a joystick is still taking the rotational measurements and doing math to convert it into joystick movements, which then needs more math to convert it into movement on the screen. It is just more math, but with the right math, it is the exact same thing. MEMS gyros are getting better though, especially in aerospace. The expensive MEMS gyros have measurement range almost as good as the fancy optical gyros but the cheap MEMS gyros in our game controllers are not there yet. So the question is, which company is going to be bold enough to bring high precision gyros to its game controllers? Do you think I should look deeper into the chips in our game controllers? Build a test suite around them? Subscribe or leave me a comment. That would be a great indication that you guys are interested in this. For now, gyros won't replace the thumbsticks in our game controllers, and unfortunately won't beat the mouse either. It can however do more damage than a mouse, it is a great complementary input to the thumbstick and its applications in VR gaming is undeniable. Gamepads are still my go-to for gaming and gyros just makes them better, so I'm happy to have them. How about you? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you 